Leonidas, or Leo Valdez, is a character from the Heroes of Olympus and Trials of Apollo. And in this video, I'll share and break down his life, from his childhood and to the events of the Blood of Olympus. Originally, I was going to share his entire life in this video, but that'll probably be a very long video to make, as Leo is one of the main characters in these books. So I decided that this video will be part 1 of this 2 part series of Leo's life, so make sure you check out part 2 which I'll post soon. As usual, spoiler warning, and with that, let's get started. Leo Valdez was born in Houston, Texas to a mortal mechanic named Esperanza Valdez, and the god of craftsmanship Hephaestus. Leo had a grandfather named Sammy Valdez, who was Hazel Levesque's first boyfriend before Hazel died. Once as a baby, the Valdez family got together, and Sammy was very excited to hold his grandson Leo. Sammy told Leo about Hazel, and how he wanted to tell Hazel he was sorry. Leo didn't think that much about his encounter with his grandfather, but little did he know that he'd get to meet Hazel Levesque later on. When Leo was about two years old, he had a babysitter named Tia Kalita, and she would often let Leo do weird stuff to train to be a hero. Unknown to anyone at the time, Tia Kalita was actually the queen of the gods Hera, and Hera trained Leo as a toddler for the upcoming Prophecy of Seven, which Leo would later participate in the future. In the last encounter that Leo had with Hera, or Tia Kalita, Leo drew a desire to Argo II, which was a ship that Leo would go on to build in the Heroes of Olympus. Through all the training that Leo went through, it was clear that he was a gifted child, and what was surprising was his fire powers, as Hephaestus kids would rarely inherit this type of power. This made Leo a very rare kind of demigod, and Esperanza once told him that his father would explain why he was so special. Esperanza and Leo were very close to one another, and she taught Leo Spanish, English, math, and Morse code. She even taught him to fix a couple of machines, and by the age of 8, Leo knew how to repair and was able to do math better than adults. At the same age, Leo unfortunately lost his mother in a fire. The two of them had just finished working together in the shop they owned, and Esperanza forgot her keys inside. She went back inside to get it, when suddenly, Leo was confronted by a woman who looked a lot like Tia Kalita. However, it wasn't Hera, but Gaia. Leo and Gaia have a back and forth, with Gaia telling him to remember that night, as she can't kill him yet because of the fates, but that she could kill Esperanza instead to emotionally break Leo. This angered Leo, and fire appeared in his hands. The next thing he knew, the room went up in flames, and he had used his powers to trap his mother inside, killing her instantly. Leo woke up to paramedics, and he blamed himself for his mother's death. Now homeless and parentless, Leo's relatives shunned him from the family, not allowing him to live under their house, and a prominent family member who did this was Leo's Aunt Rosa, who according to the Heroes of Olympus, Leo would continue to hold a grudge against. Leo was around the age of 15 when he was taken to court and sent into the wilderness school after running away from a foster home for the sixth time. There, he met a demigod named Piper McLean and a satyr named Gleason Hedge. Coach Hedge was secretly assigned to protect Leo and Piper, and eventually bring them to Camp Hapblood. But obviously, nobody knew this at the time. Soon enough, Jason Grace joined the school as well, and the mist gave fake memories to Leo and made Leo bond with Jason, thinking that Jason was his best friend when in fact Jason didn't even know who he was. So now, let's head to the events of The Lost Hero, the first book in the Heroes of Olympus series. Jason, Piper, and Leo were on a field trip to the Grand Canyon. And there, they were attacked by Aventus named Dylan. A fight breaks out because of it, and Leo was almost kidnapped, but was saved by Coach Hedge. At that moment, Annabeth, Chase, and Butch arrived in the Apollo Chariot to take the demigods to camp. Once in Camp Hapblood, Leo was immediately claimed by his father Hephaestus, and Will Solas gave Leo a tour of camp, and led him to the Hephaestus cabin. Once there, Leo talked with Jake Mason and Nyssa, who were also Hephaestus' children, and from it, Leo learns that his fire ability was considered a curse because of its destructiveness. That night, Rachel there announced a prophecy to Jason Grace for a quest to save Hera, and Leo immediately volunteered to join the quest. They needed the means of transportation, and while thinking about one, Leo went to the woods and camp, and he found a bronze dragon who was considered untamable and unfixable by the Hephaestus cabin. Leo was able to fix it though, and he named the dragon Festus, which meant happy in Latin. The next day, Leo showed Festus off to Jason and Piper, and the three of them fly to Boreas. There, Leo met and fell in love with Keone, the snow goddess, but Keone turned out to be evil as she attacked Jason and Piper. After this, Festus' engine broke down, 
They landed and Leo started to fix him. While doing so, Jason and Piper got captured by Cyclopses. Seeing that it was up to him to save them, Leo made an incredibly creative rescue to save them by using his tool belt. The trio then met Medea, and she used her charm speak to make Leo and Jason fight. Piper managed to snap them both out of it, and later that day, Leo also received a vision from his father Hephaestus, and Hephaestus told Leo he loved him and that he wanted to talk more soon. Not long after that, Festus breaks down again, and they met Laterces and King Midas. Leo gets turned into pure gold by Midas, but luckily, Jason managed to remove the curse and save them all. Later, as the trio set up camp, Lycaon, the first werewolf attacks, but is stopped by the hunters of Artemis. Thalia Grace led the hunters, and Leo was immediately smitten by Thalia, but he quickly shut up when he realized she was Jason's sister. After that encounter, the trio goes to Aeolus's place, and it's attacked after Leo got the drawing he made of the Arco II. They escaped and they go to Mount Diabolo, where they fought against the giants. The trio ultimately wins, and they received the message to meet Thalia in the wolf house. Once they arrived, Keone freezes the hunters of Artemis, and Leo and Keone have a one-on-one -on -one fight. Leo's strength is shown here, as he managed to defeat a literal goddess. Leo then helps in freeing Hera from her trap, and once free, Hera transformed into her divine form and killed off all the remaining giants single-handedly. Hera then transports the demigods back to Camp Hapblood, and Leo brings up his plan in creating the Argo too, and how Jason was a demigod from another camp. The Greeks concluded it was clear that Percy was inside Jason's camp, and that Hera planned the whole thing. Leo doesn't technically appear in the Son of Neptune, but there are a few mentions of him, and all of which are just about Leo building the Argo II for the Seven. Because of this, let's get to the Mark of Athena. Around this time, Leo had already finished building the Argo II, and he along with Annabeth, Jason, Piper, and Coach Hedge go to Camp Jupiter. Leo meets with the Romans, and when Octavian, a Roman legacy of Apollo, questions the Argo II, Leo takes Octavian to prove it's safe. And there, Leo was possessed by an Adolin, and it made Leo use the Argo II to fire at the Roman camp. The Romans tried destroying the ship and taking the Seven as prisoners, but luckily, they managed to escape. Leo doesn't remember anything, and he feels horrible for messing up. After that, we learn that Hazel recognized Leo because of how alike he was to Sammy Valdez, and this makes the two of them bond over it. Hazel and Leo become very close after this, and they share quite a few almost romantic moments. So because the Romans fought back and tried to wreck their ship earlier, the crew needed some items to repair the Argo too. While doing that, Leo met Nemesis, the goddess of revenge. Nemesis gets into Leo's head and tells him how he'll always be the seventh wheel, or the outcast. She gives him a fortune cookie and tells him that he'll use what's inside when he's desperate for an answer to something. Nemesis also mentions that they have to save Nico D'Angelo, who was captured by giants in Tartarus. After that encounter, Leo and Hazel manage to get celestial bronze for a ship, after a hilarious stunt Leo made with Narcissus. After an incident with Jason and Percy nearly killing each other in a duel, they learn about Adolins, and Leo feels less guilty about what happened in New Rome, as he was not fully to blame for the explosion he fired at Camp Jupiter. The Seven discuss Nico's rescue, and Leo mistrusts Nico, thinking it wasn't worth doing. Hazel gets outraged at this because Nico was her half-brother, and Frank gets mad at Leo for upsetting Hazel. Later, Frank gets himself trapped in a Chinese finger trap, and Leo mercilessly makes jokes about Frank's situation, which caused Frank some self-esteem issues. Despite getting upset with him earlier, Hazel and Leo bond more. At one point, Hazel takes his hand and explains to him through a flashback about Sammy Valdez. Hazel starts crying as they leave the flashback, and the Argo too was under attack. Frank barges into the room and sees the two of them close together, making him jealous. The attack goes on, and it leads to Frank and Leo getting trapped in an underwater prison. There, Leo makes it clear that nothing romantic was going on between him and Hazel, and Frank eventually believed him. The group meets again, and is attacked by Chris Yor, but they manage to survive it thanks to some teamwork. After a couple more events, Leo, Hazel, and Frank go to a pantheon, and they see the works of Archimedes. Leo gets excited by this, but they are quickly attacked by the Adolins. Leo was forced to open the fortune cookie to save Hazel and Frank, and he made a spear to destroy the creatures. Leo then rescues Percy, Jason, Piper, and Nico in the Colosseum, 
and all of them decided to save Annabeth, who had followed the mark of Athena. Leo drives to Argo too to where Annabeth was, and all of them work together to haul the Athena Parthenos inside. It was an almost successful mission, but things go terribly wrong when Annabeth and Percy fell into Tartarus, and Leo felt devastated. And now, let's go to the House of Hades. Here, we learn that the rest of the Seven had been trying to get to Epirus, and we open the book midway into chaos as the Argo too was attacked by Earth spirits. We witness Leo and Hazel argue as to what to do, and it ends with Leo agreeing to drop her off to check the surroundings. It's revealed in this book that ever since they got the Athena part in us, Leo's been obsessed with making it work, but so far, there was no luck in turning it on. One night, Leo fell asleep and he dreamed of Gaia telling him that it was no use to continue the mission, as Camp Haplet was already being attacked by Octavian. Leo wakes up from this nightmare, and he and Jason go downtown. Once there, they are ambushed by dwarves. Jason gets knocked out in the chase, but Leo managed to catch the dwarves. He then tells them to sabotage the Romans, who were still after them, and he goes back to the ship to find Kioni there. Kioni literally blasts Leo out of the ship, and he lands on the island of Ujidia, or Calypso's island. Calypso gets furious that Leo was sent there by the gods to her, and the two of them get into a heated argument. After that, they constantly argued, but eventually, they warmed up to one another, and Leo found himself falling for Calypso. A raft soon came to Ojigia to take him away, and before leaving, Calypso surprised him by kissing him suddenly, and she pushed him to the raft. Leo was stunned, and as the raft left, he said, I'm coming back for you, Calypso. I swear it on the river Styx. Leo meets up with the rest of the seven, and Jason noticed that Leo was heartsick. Despite this, Leo helps in the fight, and he fought side by side with Hazel against Pasiphae. After the battle, Leo and the rest meet with Reina Ramirez Arellano, the female praetor of Camp Jupiter. In their conversation, everybody agreed that Nico, Coach Hedge, and Reina were going to bring the Athena Parthenos to Camp Hapblood. And now, let's head to the Blood of Olympus the last book in the Heroes of Olympus series. We meet Leo after Jason got stabbed, and Annabeth used Morse code to talk to him. Throughout the book, it's said over and over again that Leo was working on something, but nobody knew what it was. Leo also admitted his love for Calypso to Hazel, and the seven discussed the next plan. Percy, Leo, Frank, and Hazel decided to go to Olympia, and while doing this plan, Leo felt a bit awkward around Percy. He knew that Percy left Calypso in Ojigia, and Leo hated the idea that he was working with someone who did that. After trying to defeat Nike though, Leo heard Percy confess that he didn't mean to leave Calypso, and he apologized for it, which Leo accepted. They managed to defeat Nike, and they landed on an island called Delos. On Delos, they met Apollo and Artemis, and Leo talked with Apollo about the physician's cure. Apollo's son Asclepius was the one who made it. And after Leo showed off an invention called the Valdesinator, Apollo gave him a daisy and advice about the physician's cure. Leo ended up telling his plan to Frank and Hazel about what he was going to do with the cure. It turns out that Leo plans to sacrifice himself to kill Gaia, and he'll use the physician's cure to get back to life after he died. The next day, Leo joins Piper and Jason to get the cure from Asclepius, and they manage to get it. Now with the cure, he plays it in Festus, and he programmed the ship to go to Ojigia after he died. The Seven went to the Parthenon, and Leo drove the Argo II into the battle. He fought side by side with his father Hephaestus, and once the giants were defeated, Leo talked to the gods about how to defeat Gaia. With that, Zeus sent the demigods back to Camp Hamlet. Gaia was waking up, and Leo drove Festus into her. Fire exploded around them, and Leo's plan worked. Gaia was defeated, but Leo died along with it. We meet Leo again in the final chapter, and he wakes up with Festus. As promised, Leo sailed back to Ojigia and took Calypso out of the island, and they rode into the unknown. And that's how the Blood of Olympus ends. Leo's journey in the Ryanverse doesn't end here, so tune in for part 2 on the life of Leo Valdez, which will cover what happens to him in the Trials of Apollo series which takes place just after the Blood of Olympus. So how about you? What's your favorite Leo moment? Let me know in the comments down below.